Welcome back to Carnades.org. In this video, we're going to be looking at puzzles and the history of science. Now, before we get started, let's look at some famous mistakes throughout the history of science. Science once believed in things like phlogiston, rivers on Mars, phrenology, alchemy, and astrology, and other pseudosciences, the planet Vulcan, spontaneous generation of small creatures, a plum pudding model of the atom, as well as various other models of the atom, and of course, luminiferous ether. Now, science views these things as good things, that science is made stronger by its ability to self-correct and change its views. Science continues to change for the better, based on new evidence, and that science is an ever-improving and evolving process. The skeptic, on the other hand, thinks that science's claim to knowledge is made weaker, in fact, by its lack of consistency. Changing views means that those views are going to continue to change, and that no current views should be granted special treatment or acknowledged as knowledge because they're going to be different in a hundred years, and those views will be different in a hundred years, and so on and so forth. The way that I think it's best to put these views together is to imagine that we're trying to put together a puzzle of knowledge. And what we have are pieces of evidence. Those pieces of evidence are strangely shaped. They don't all fit together. Some of them don't even belong in the puzzle. Some of them fit together seemingly really well. But upon closer examination, you realize that another piece of evidence would in fact fit better there. So on and so forth. What the scientist does is they take all the evidence that we have, all of the puzzle pieces, and they do their best to push them together and to cram them together into the best possible puzzle we can make. Even though it's clear that pieces of evidence are missing, and it's clear that eventually some of those pieces of evidence are going to be replaced. And they call it a theory. And then eventually, when a new piece of evidence comes along, the scientist will jam it in there, will maybe drop a piece of evidence, and call it a new different theory. The problem with calling these theories knowledge is that this is to claim that this amalgamation of evidence is the solution to the puzzle. Even though we know that more evidence is going to be presented and that the theory will change. It's okay to call that theory the best possible arrangement of evidence, and people can argue about how you should arrange the evidence, and that's where a scientific debate gets involved, and it's very interesting. But to call that theory knowledge is to claim that we're never going to get any more evidence, and that the puzzle is already solved. The skeptic, on the other hand, wants to wait until we can perfectly and securely solve the puzzle. To put this in terms that look more like an argument and less like a strange thought experiment, let's look. Premise 1. Scientific theories, claims, and predictions may change with the addition of new evidence. I believe that science takes pride in that and would not object. Certain knowledge cannot change. If something is certain and it is knowledge, it must be true, and things that are true are not able to change. We do not yet possess all the possible evidence, and will continue to uncover new evidence. I'm not saying that we will always have this, but at the moment, premise 3 seems to be the case. Therefore, from 1 and 3, scientific theories, claims, and predictions may change. And therefore, scientific theories, claims, and predictions cannot be certain knowledge because they are subject to change. They are theories. They're things that change. They're the best guess right now, and when we get more evidence, things will change. So, out of these videos, let's see if we can draw some conclusions that will hopefully make both the skeptic and the scientist happy. We saw that science, like all disciplines that make assumptions, is at least in a small way based on faith. Even if you only have faith in the principle, the axiom that the universe obeys rational laws, you have faith in something, and science is in some way based on faith. Scientific theories are more like best guesses than certain knowledge. They're taking the evidence we have and putting them together in the most sensible arrangement. They're not something that's going to stick around forever because we may get more evidence. And strict belief in the truth of science is not required to use and benefit from science. What should we do, therefore? 
we should use science, but suspend judgment on its truth value. Until we have all the pieces, and until we can eliminate those assumptions that we're making, there's no reason and no need to believe that science, in fact, has any truth value. We can just use science and its predictive value, like the good instrumentalist does, without believing that it's knowledge, and without holding that it has some relation to the world. We, in fact, simply suspend judgment. I'll leave you with a quote from The Matrix. If real is what you can feel, smell, taste, or see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Watch this video and more at carneades.org. I hope I didn't offend too many scientists here. If you have objections or comments, please post them, send them in. I'd love to respond. And stay skeptical, everybody.